you can freeze that. Uh, if you activate the phone or if you want to do it when you sync, uh, you can actually use the send here. This will automatically send. Uh, this question about use Outlook, if you set up uh, your if you do activate the phone, you set it up to use a separate non-Outlook email account, you would say no here. If you say yes, then it'll use the Outlook mail account that you've set up. And if you haven't set one up, uh, it uses the default. Now it takes a minute to do the work here. It's saving the file and it's uh, getting all the settings uh, for email here. And in a moment it will pop up. So you see here you've got a complete email form. It's automatically attached this in a file. You can you enter the to address in the from this this one hasn't really been set up, so it's not quite real because, like I said, they, we haven't set up the Outlook account on this phone yet, uh, but you can do so. And if you don't activate the phone, then you can still use this so that when if you sync it uh, with your laptop and you set it up to sync with Outlook, it will take all the messages that are in your Outbox, put them on your laptop or desktop, and then use that internet connection to actually send the messages. And this is a full email form, so you can come down here. Right. It automatically puts in, it says, you know, send a file sent from the cell phone, um, but right, you can, you know, you can, you can type, you can put your initials at the end, you can type whatever message you want in addition, say, oh, this is my carotid artery, and so on. And you would click send if you were going to actually send this. I'm not going to send it, so I'm just going to cancel the message. Again, if you're connected to a network, if you activate the phone and connect to a network right now, it would send the message right now. No, I don't want to say the message, or else it would put it in your Outlook box so that when you sync up the phone, you're ready to go. Okay. Um, you can play the CINE from this file also. Um, the, the, the info tab doesn't do very much. There's not very much interesting here. Uh, you can play around. You can get that, you know, the, the version of the software, uh, probe info. So it shows you serial number. In this case, we don't have a serial number on here. Uh, firmware version, the probe name, and so on. There are a few options in the options menu. Uh, we have an overlay, which is a little hard to see here, but up here uh, we're displaying the probe name and the frames per second and so on. Uh, you can choose to turn that off by clicking here. Again, maybe a little hard to see that that actually did anything. It's a little dim in the display. Uh, we also have what I call power save. So by default, when you bring the application up, it makes sure that the screen will never dim and it runs at full speed. It'll never go to sleep. Uh, there's nothing more annoying than being in the middle of a scan and having the screen dim. Uh, if, however, uh, you're mostly playing back cines, uh, or you're just doing a demo with somebody where you have a bunch of cines and you're not actively scanning and you're going to do this a lot, you can click power save. You notice as soon as I did, it dimmed. Now, what will happen is just like a standard cell phone now. So when I start playing with the keypad, it will come back and it'll be bright. But what will happen is if I don't touch the keys, uh, for a while, this depends on how you've set your phone up, uh, it'll again dim on you. Okay? And then of course you just hit a key to get back there. So by default, uh, we don't have power save on. Um, and what will happen is if even if you have power save on uh, selected, and if you're actively scanning, uh, it will force the phone not to go into sleep mode. And it'll force it to not dim. Uh, but if you're, again, if you're playing back Cine's, you got this in your pocket and you want to make sure you have as much runtime as possible. Uh, you can put power save on if you're just kind of showing Cine files. Uh, we do find that with, uh, with this phone and, and one of these probes, you'll get well in excess of 90 minutes of continuous runtime. Uh, just putting the probe connected and hitting scan and walking away, you come back 90 minutes later and you've still got over 30% battery life left. The phone will turn off your probe when you get to about 20% battery life. So you can't run this all the way down, uh, and it does that to conserve, to conserve power, obviously. So you, you, you don't want to take this out uh, and try to show somebody a live scan if you haven't charged the battery recently. Uh, you know, half or 40% is fine, 30% I've run it down to, you get to about 20% and it will actually turn off uh, the power going to, to the probe. So in a nutshell, that's it. Oh, the, one last thing I want to show you, the you know, Windows Mobile applications, when you hit the X in the window, that doesn't really close the application, just puts it in the background. This application takes a fair amount of memory and it's, it's often the case that it, you probably don't want to just leave it running. You can, especially if you're just playing some Cine's and you want to come back to it later. Um, so the way to exit and actually shut everything down is to hit close. 
when you do close, it, it, that actually exits the program completely. It also turns off the power save modes, puts them back to normal. So if you just hit the X, you didn't have power save on, it's going to keep your phone running full speed and never turn off that backlight. Okay, so it'll run your battery down a lot quicker. So you just hit close when you're done. And in a nutshell, that's how you use uh, the ultrasound scanner on the cell phone.